All right, check out this pog I made. All right, here we go. We got. Oh, he lost something. Yo, look at that. We're not an old man, Scooter Red. We don't need to stretch before we work out and stuff. Good morning, sir. Oh, good morning, sir. I'm just jamming some skate. All right, check out this pog I made. Not what I intended, but sure. <laughs> what, what? What it do, Buddha Crew, it is your boy Finance B here, aka Sawfoot Gang. You wanna hear my ankle click? Okay, so my ankle is pretty fucking sore, and we were contemplating doing another custom build today, but I really wanna get out of the house. It's been, oh, how long has it been? A week now? Did I do it on Monday or Thursday last week? I can't even remember. Yeah. However long it's been, I don't know, it's sore though, it's very, very sore. I've been going to the gym basically every day and doing like specific exercises to kind of work on it. Um, a lot of walking, a lot of uh, sissy squats, they call them, and a lot of other things like cable movement and resistant band stuff and boring shit that you guys don't fucking care about. But you should! We're gonna go for uh, a little ride, and I'm basically gonna break down today how to avoid certain injuries in the scooter industry that we've all definitely uh, dealt with at one point or another, whether it be ankles, arms, knees, hips, back, neck, everything. I've experienced the works, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna break down some of the things that you can do to avoid getting these injuries, okay? Cool. Let's do it, man. Some new toys, guys. <laughs> some new toys. Fuck getting a new camera, because that was the plan A. But the plan B was attachments. And I think plan B is gonna go much better than plan A. All right, here we go. We got the Rode Wireless Go. Oh, he lost something. Wow, it's got an onboard mic too, so you could just like legit clip this on yourself. We can't film this, but. Yo, look at the mirror, guys. Yo, look at that. Look at that mic receiver on the side there. Yeah, we have two cameras here. <laughs> oh yeah, right. <laughs> Shit, I forgot. Hey, yo, that's actually really, really tight, man. And it's like not bulky or yeah. anything. It's like just chilling. Good. <laughs> Here we are at Rolleston Skate Park. Now today, before we get into the riding side of the video, I'm gonna take a very important step here and give you guys a quick life lesson on your flexibility, your balance, and stretching. Because these are three things that you need to do every time you ride. Now I know, I know, I know. We're not an old man, Scooter Red. We don't need to stretch before we work out and stuff. We're young and limber. Shut the fuck up, come. Stretching is mega important when it comes to scooter riding, man, because I'm telling you, if you want to ride into your mid-20s, late-20s, early-30s, like some of us big boys, 
you are gonna need to take this part of your writing a little bit more seriously, and that is for sure. When I was younger, I never actually stretched ever before or after I would ride. And let me tell you, after coming back into riding like this year, a lot more seriously. Through the videos that we've been doing recently, I've been jumping rope, I've been stretching every time I ride, and that is not for show. I do that for myself. I don't just do that for... Hello! Hello! <laughs> Oi, leave the sandwich alone. Oi! Hey! Off you go. That sucks. <laughs> Did it eat his sandwich? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Dog slobber on the sandwich, that's no fucking good. <laughs> I'll tell you what else is no fucking good. Having shitty flexibility. It's bad, it's not good. It'll be a detriment to the rest of your life, let me tell you. You won't be able to dance right, you won't be able to swim right, you ain't gonna be able to walk fucking right, man. You're gonna have all these issues, trust me, I got them all. <laughs> all right, here we go. As you guys know, my ankle has been a bit fucked up since last week and I'm taking my rehabilitation on it very, very, very seriously. I'm doing all the necessary steps to uh, make sure that it comes right and is not just another injury that I just let get away from me over time. Because if you don't deal with these things the one time it happens, it's just gonna happen again and again and again and again and again and again until you just say, fuck it, I'm done with riding. But the only reason why you would have been done with riding is because you didn't take the time to address the issues at hand. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. We're addressing those issues. So what are a number of things that I can think of that every scooter rider has dealt with over the past, you know, decade of riding scooters? Ankles, rolling your ankles is very, very bad. A lot of people just throw a brace on and keep riding. <laughs> Kieran. <laughs> when I fucked up my ankle last week, I did not kind of just want to throw a brace on it and just go on my way. I really am taking it more seriously. You go to physiotherapy, you know, you can get acupuncture. There's a lot of different treatments that you can kind of pursue when you're dealing with an injury. My personal favorite, definitely physiotherapy. Physiotherapy is reasonably cheap, especially if you're from New Zealand. You can claim basically anything on ACC and you'll pay like 20 bucks for a session with a physiotherapist. And I'm telling you that 20 bucks is gonna go a long, long way as long as you actually listen and do the required exercises that these professionals give you. Now, I'm not a health professional. I ask Dr. Google for fucking everything, you know what I mean? I'm sure a lot of you can relate. A couple of the things that my physio has been giving me for my ankle has really been helping. So I'm gonna show you one of those things because this is probably the number one injury that every scooter rider goes through. Okay, so exercise number one. You wanna find something like this where you're seated or almost seated. I'm gonna have to kind of hold myself off the edge to get close enough to this pole. But basically, you bump your shoe against it and you just wanna push push against the pole to the right hand side. So I'm using my left foot and I'm relaxing and then I'm pushing. This is called loading the inner tendon of your something something. I don't fucking know the scientific terms, but you have to load with pressure the uh, particular thing that goes up into the archway of your foot. This may not seem like a exercise that's gonna fix your ankle because you know, when you've got a sore ankle, you kind of sit there and go like this. This does nothing makes you figure out, hmm, where is all the pain at? Oh, there it is, because I'm rolling it into that spot. That's not what you wanna do. Keep your leg nice and straight, your hip nice and straight, and load up the tension. Six seconds each push, 10 reps, three times over, and then your trouble's gonna be gone in no time.
so much more than it normally would. Ah, which brings me to my next point. Balance, right? Balance is very, very important when it comes to any action sport, particularly scootering, skateboarding as well, and BMX obviously, but I would say BMX has a little bit more of a consistency with the legs because you're using both feet on both pedals and it's kind of an even distribution of weight. When you skate or scoot, you always have your lead foot on your scooter and your push foot off your scooter, correct? We can all agree on this? I think so. If you have your leading foot on your scooter, it is always gonna be the balance leg while you just are using this foot for just brutal strength and basically just giving you the traction to keep forward and keep moving, right? When you push Mongo, it's obviously the same thing. You have your balance foot, although it's much more centered under your body. When you have your regular push foot, you're kind of a lot further back over your foot. You're not sitting way up here when it comes to your full on movement. You start going back and forth, back and forth. Now this, it creates a big imbalance in your legs and physicians have told me this. So something that I have to do now is what we call a sissy squat. Now I'm gonna walk you through what a sissy squat is, all right, you little fucking sissies. <laughs> So you're probably gonna need something to hold on to for your first few rounds of this, because it's <laughs> fairly difficult, right? What you wanna do is come up to a wall or basically anything else. Try not to keep all of your weight on it while you're balancing. Align your hip, your knee, and your ankle all in one spot, and just start going down. As if you're pushing. You see this? This is like a push motion, right? But you have to make sure that you really push through this foot and make sure that you're hip socket is really hugging onto your leg and your femur bone. You go down, not too low, keep it nice and straight, back up, just like a push motion. See this? And back up. Doing this on both sides is gonna help you regain the muscular balance. See, look at, look at how far I can go down on this leg, right? This is my push leg. Look at how easily I can go way down there. Left leg which is my balancing foot. This is my leading foot on my scooter. Look how weak this is. Oh, shit, that's difficult, man. Your push foot is definitely gonna be much more dominant than your balance leg because you're getting brutal strength out of this all the time. Plus, if you push Mongo, this leg's gonna be a lot stronger. This leg's gonna be much weaker, and you don't want that. You want them both to be on point 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay, I'm pretty beat. Ooh. All right, my final point of the day is gonna be flexibility. Now, this is a bit like stretching, yes, but stretching is more so kind of like to get yourself limber for the session. When I talk flexibility, I mean like permanent flexibility, right? Because you don't wanna be performing a trick and fuck it up and flail, like, you know, how you kind of like let your legs go out like this way and your arms go this way when you're in the air, like, whoa. If you're not flexible, period, full stop, then doing these kind of things is what's gonna cause an injury for you. If you don't have the limber ability to twist your body this way and this way and any which way, it's gonna be really detrimental when it actually comes to getting an injury. If you don't have flexibility, it's way easier to just like pull a muscle because, oh, it can only go this far and me fucking up this trick made it go this far and now it's fucked, right? So when it comes down to flexibility, you wanna kind of go for stretches that open up certain ligaments of your body in certain ways. There's a couple of favorites that I like to do. One is for my back, this is for your thoracic and your cervical spine. Basically, you just sit like this, as straight as possible, toes pointed up, not pointing forward, but pointing upwards. Take your hands, cross them between your shoulder blades. Take a deep breath, and you're gonna feel this from the back of your feet all the way up your calves, all the way up your thighs, all the way through the lower back. 
Inhale as you come up and push, 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 push. Oh my God. You guys might be a lot more flexible than I am, but this is gonna help you tenfold. Uh. All right, my next favorite one, it might be a little bit difficult to do at a skate park, but this is uh, for your hip flexor, the front of your thighs, right? Now these always get tight because if you are crutching over your scooter at all times, you're basically leaning forward, your thigh muscles are engaged and nothing is really opening up like yonder way. You wanna get your knee hard up against this wall, right? You're gonna feel this basically from your knee all the way up through your hip flexor. And they say that you should stay here for two minutes. I've been doing this every day for about eight weeks and I still can't do two minutes yet. But it's a good pain. It's a good pain. If you're sitting a lot, if you do a lot of computer work, obviously in your spare time, like I do, I do my editing of my own videos, plus taxes, plus this, that, the other. Guys at school, everyone is sitting at their desks. You're sitting down for six or so hours a day. You wanna get up, get home, and do that hip flexor one. If there was one stretch that I hope you could take away from this video, it is that one right there, because I'm telling you, it's gonna open up a world of possibility with your legs. Your legs are gonna feel so much better if you've got a sore lower back all the time from hunching over your books, that's gonna help as well. A lot of people, including myself, thought that if you would kind of go and stretch your back, your shoulders, your neck, a lot of the things would help. But if your base plate isn't all intact, AKA your legs, your hips, then everything stacked on top of it is also not gonna be doing its job properly because every muscle group has to compensate for things that are going wrong below it. So if you take care of your hips, your knees, your ankles, things are gonna go much more smoothly for you. And ironically, things in scootering basically involve mostly your legs. So take your legs seriously. That is all. How rude of me, I'm standing here thinking, I haven't actually showed you guys around this skate park yet. Okay, so Rollison Park. You've got a wave right here, that's one of my favorite features. This quarter pipe, it's nice and long, it's nice and mellow, you can boost that and just get hella air on it, it's very nice. Next to it, you got the smaller quarters, which is always fun. Right here, you got flat rail, down rail, three set, which is fun for firecrackers. You know, it makes that nice little noise. Definitely a decent ledge. It's actually fun if you take a sprint at it, you can just run up, jump up here, and then hop the whole thing. I can't really do that, obviously, at the moment because of my foot. <laughs> I don't like this ledge. I don't like the way it's cut in on the sides. It doesn't make much sense. The coping is also awful. The concrete sticks up about half an inch higher than the actual railing does. So this, I don't think ever used to have a flat top. I guess a lot of kids uh, ate shit on this thing, so they decided to put a bit of metal welded in the top, uh, which is fine, it makes sense. You got a little channel gap. It does have coping at the top. If you were brave enough to, I don't know, maybe grind the top, drop off the side, that would be kind of swell. And uh, this is just like a seating area. You got the artwork around the back too, which is uh, basically just a mural for uh Odd work. Yeah, it's very fun, very nice. Great pop. And now for some clips with an injured foot. Enjoy. should not be riding. <laughs> I said Thursday and then I thought of you guys and I was like, all right, I guess I'll fucking ride on Monday. It's fine, whatever. I'll be fine. I'm not fine though. <laughs> guys want me to push it, but I can't. Like whenever I jump into something, my foot is like not allowing me to like tense it up and like hold on to the deck properly. Just feel like every trick is kind of getting away from me. Ow. 
Yeah, nah. I'm done. All right, guys, that is gonna be it for today's video. We are doing a little bit of a short, mediocre one. As you know, my foot is fucked up, okay? There's no excuse, but it is my excuse. So fuck you if you don't like it. <clears throat> that is it for me. It's been your boy, Finance B, and I cannot fucking see, cuz. See you guys next time. Wait. Bye! <laughs>